Ilya Taporia, taking on Max Blessed Holloway. <sighs> Where do I start with this fight? You think that the exact same way as I do as to where that this fight is going to be. Tell me, and I'll tell you if I'm better group. Let's have a debate. Go on then, how do you think it goes? UFC 308 is upon us. Abu Dhabi, the destination uh, for, in my opinion, the best fight in MMA that is currently booked. Agreed. Ilya Taporia taking on Max Blessed Holloway. 145 pound strap on the line. This man's a 145 pounder. I'm going to shut up. He's going to tell you just how good of a bloody fight this is because it's absolutely tremendous, isn't it? <sighs> Where do I start with this fight? I sit here all day thinking about what well, that could happen. But guess what? That could happen. Yeah, but what if Ilya just goes out and bangs him out? Yeah, but what if Max takes it five and drowns him? He's not really had the title experience. This, that. Like so many scenarios are going around my head about this fight. What? I don't know what's going to happen. That's the truth, Adam. I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you, mate. And that's what makes for a great fight. Off the back of the performance that Max Holloway put in against Justin Gaethje, think, just think about this, right? And I, I kind of alluded to this with another fighter last week, but I'm going to go all out on this. The fighter of the year right now is Alex Pereira. Yeah? 100%. Right. Just hold your horses for a second, right? So Alex Pereira, three world title defences, light heavyweight, knocking people out, all good, man. Yeah. So the trophy, we're, we're, we're engraving the name on the trophy. It's on its way to you. Yeah. But if Max Holloway rocks up in Abu Dhabi this weekend, following what he did against Justin Gaethje and the manner of what he did against Justin Gaethje earlier on in the year to become the BMF at 155 pounds, if he goes back down in weight and regains his crown, by beating an undefeated Ilya Taporia, who's just starched the pound for pound number one, number two at the time in Alexander Volkanovsky, the man enters the conversation for fighter of the year. You might not agree with me, you might not give him the trophy, but he's in that conversation because that is that is something else. That is something completely yeah. off this planet to be able to do, to go down in weight from that fight to this fight and win it. Mate, that would be unbelievable. I, I just, uh, again, I've, I wish I had words for you and what I think is going to happen, but I look at Taporia's boxing, and I already told you that I think he's the main guy in the UFC right now. I think he, he's the guy now that they could put all the eggs behind. If he gets it done against Max Holloway, it's a no-brainer who's the main guy right now. Do you know what I mean? Because his stardom's going to go from where it is now to you know, next level, which it already is. When you're knocking about at the burner bow, mate, with your trophies and your, and your, and your belts, and, you, and they're letting you in the door and everyone's cheering for you, and football stadiums are clapping you as you walk in and out, that's something we've not really seen in MMA yet. You know what I mean? Like, that's the type of things he's touching at the minute within that Spanish community. Let me tell you something. I'll tell you why you're not committing to what I've just said. I'll tell you why you're not committing. Because what I've just said there, right, normally you would jump in and go, I 100% agree with you. And the reason why you're not committing because I'm is because... <laughs> No, 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 no. Not because of Bilal. It's because I think that you think, like, you think that the exact same way as I do as to where that this fight is going to tell be. Tell me, and I'll tell you if I agree. I think Ilya Tapuria will be the first man to stop Max with his hands. See, yeah. I wasn't thinking that, to be honest. Let's have a debate. Go on, then. How do you think it goes? We're talking about, like, you know, like when he's fought good boxers before, like Kelvin Cater and other people, like, yeah. like oh, or, he's, put, he's put manners on Ortega he's put and, like, real good boxers. Like, look at the way he's dealt with the range. And I think Sapori is just another one of these guys. Yeah, I think he's a level above the two guys I just mentioned. Yeah, I really do. But Holloway has shown me his ability to deal with high level strikers, aka boxers, do you know what I mean? And range. Yeah. Um five rounds is not a single issue for him. If anything he gets correct. He gets better as the rounds go. So then it's yeah. like if he doesn't knock him out and we start talking third, fourth and fifth, where's the poor are you gonna be at then? Who's the better grappler? 
uh, from what I'm hearing, Saporia, from what I hear from the inside of the yeah, the, the scene, I hear he's a better wrestler and grappler than he is striker. If that's true, wow. I do hear that. Do you hear that? Yeah. That's scary, isn't it, mate? But <laughs> and then, but then, what a fight. We also seen Jai Herbert giving problems, didn't we? Another tall striker. Yeah. Put him down. Another him tall down. striker. So it's like, there's so many variables in this fight, and you will never see me write off Max Holloway. I think he's my all-time top three favourite in MMA history. So. Oh, there's no doubt. So, there's no doubt. So There is absolutely no doubt. So are you, are you, are you saying that Max Holloway will regain the 145 crown? I'm saying I don't know, honestly. I'd love to give you a prediction. <laughs> I want to give predictions out, but that one there, mate. <laughs> You're saying Tapori is going to stop him early, aren't you? No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is this. I think I just rate Tapori that highly. Yeah. Watching him, watching his MMA boxing, oh. his range control, oh. his, his feet, the, the the way that he rips to the body, the way that he mixes it all up, the way that he thinks about, the way that he steps off to the side and then throws. I just think he's elite and knowing, or should I say, being told that he's grappling in jiu-jitsu submission game, he's better than he's boxing, I just think there's more availability for him to deliver something really, really special. Max hasn't been stopped since his debut. That was against Dustin Poirier, right? And he was submitted. He's never been knocked out. Last time out, he got clipped by Gaethje and he went down, didn't he? I just think... I mean, we, we could all sit here. Max is one of my favourites. He's one of your favourites. He's one of everybody's favourites that's watching this. And we're all wishing, Max, this would be amazing. What a wonderful fairy tale story. And then they don't work like that, man. This dude is fresh, Ilya Tapuria. Undefeated. Don't know how to lose. I agree. He's, he's the king of the division. He's the king. Yeah, right he is. Now, I, love... I just think, I think he'll find a way. The way he moves forward and backwards in his boxing stance, but still doing MMA. He looks like a professional boxer in an MMA cage. I've never seen anybody Weird. throw combinations like that. That Damon Jackson hook to the body. Have you seen it? I know it's when you, you know what about. Bang. Yeah. I'm like, how are you going to the body that hard in MMA? Like, like boxing's phenomenal. Love what I'm such a fan of his style. Such a fan of them both. And I'll be tuned in with my popcorn, mate, let me tell you. One thing's for sure. It will be an amazing fight. An amazing, <laughs> amazing fight. And if these, well, I say these two, if this one makes it to the cage on Saturday night, this also could be a fight of the year contender. Robert Whittaker taking on Hamza. Why did you say that? I mean, listen, I'm hearing good things about Chimaev. He's changed his camp. He's gone back to the Chechnya. He's been a bit more disciplined. Fingers crossed that's going to help him hitting the weight. It's going to help him with his cardio. It's going to help him with all the things that have fallen short of in the past. He came in as a firework, didn't he? And at the moment, it's fizzling. Chimaev needs to remind us why we all got excited about him. Ro I know what version of Robert Whittaker's turning up on Saturday night, mate. I know exactly what version of He is an elite, elite fighter who I think is just about coming into his prime. And he could quite comfortably outpoint Chimaev if he's not on point. But if the Chimaev that burst onto the scene turns up Saturday night, it could be the rebirth of a superstar. What do you mean the Chimaev that was just out wrestling the Olympic gold medalist that I've just seen in training? I thought, what? Like he looks like a exactly. machine, doesn't he, mate? Like, but then we look at what Robert Whitaker's been up against in the past. Yo Romero, all these wrestlers, he's fought them all. Even Ikram on what short notice, he's fought someone from that style and just made it look like just amateur, one it? He's just like the guy I'd never fought before, the way Robert dealt with him. Um, incredible fight. Another one. Straight down the middle. Bang, bang. 50-50. Take my money. You're not making a pick? Uh, are you making a pick? Yeah. Go on, then. <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to go listen, Robert I always, points, th I always thought that. I've always thought that. But I've always thought that knowing that Hamzak was ill-disciplined outside the cage, man. He, you know, he, he cuts corners. He doesn't, he doesn't give it every. Now, I, now I'm being told that he's back. He's back to how he was. He's back to doing it properly. He lit the weight properly. His cardio will be proper. After all his struggles with the COVID thing and what have you, there's no excuses anymore. He seems to be bang at it. If that version of Hamzak Chimaev turns up Saturday night, he'll win the fight. Mm. He's just a beast. He's too, he's too hard to keep off. It's like a rationing. 
You just can't keep yeah, him off, mate. Once he gets old, the way he ragdolls people around is just unheard of, mate. I mean, what he did to Usman in that initial exchange, I know Usman took it on short notice. And I wait, oh, but, first but, round's unbelievable. But, uh, first round's unbelievable. No, how nuts was that, mate? Like, how many Usman fights have we seen? Nobody has ever come close to doing that to Usman, mate. Ragdolled him all over the place. It's 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 incredible what he does. And let's just hope that Chamaya turns up. And if he does, mate, wow, Robert Whitaker's in for a tough night. Uh, Laron versus Dan Ige, a fight that's been uh, booked in the past. It fell off through injuries and what have you. That one's on this card as well. Bit of British interest. Laron knows Abu Dhabi like the back of his hand. He's had plenty of fights out there. Uh, and he's got a bag load of confidence coming into the fight off the back of a great win against Edson Barboza. Dan Ige deserves this opportunity, seeing that he took a fight on three hours' notice against Diego Lopez and had a proper good go with it, didn't he? I think this is a really good piece of matchmaking, mate. I know that Dan Ige has got great jiu-jitsu. He ain't asked about that. He just wants to have a fight, doesn't he? And I think both of these guys will have a, a fight. You know, I think it'd be quite technical for a large percentage of it. I don't, mate. I think Lerone's levels are both Danny Gay at this moment in his career. Uh, I really do. Fair. I think I think he's shown against Edson, Edson Barbos or how good he is on the feet. I don't think Danny Gay's got the ability to out-wrestle and grapple him. Um, I might be wrong, but that's how I see it. And I think um, it's a comfortable decision for Lerone. I'm quite, I can stand on that one. Do you think we will get a standout moment in the light heavyweight fight between Ankalev and Rakic? We need it for Pereira's next opponent, don't we? We need someone Mate, to say, listen, I'm the guy. Everyone's sleeping on Rakic, lad. Like, are they though? Everyone's like, yeah. Ankalev's the guy, Ankalev's the guy, Ankalev's the guy. Have you seen this Rakic? Has anyone actually... Mate. He's an animal of a man. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's no easy I was there. Night, yeah. I was there when he... Fu- I was there when he fought Yeri Prohachka and he was beating the living daylights yeah. out of Prohachka until, until Yeri flipped it exactly. on Exactly. All right? So there's, an, there's a chance for Rakic. And he'll be chomping at the bit because he knows that Ankalaev's holding the spot. Exactly. If he goes and smashes Ankalaev to bits, you're next up, son. You're fighting for the title. Exactly, mate. There's a lot of noise about Ankalaev in that division and being next in line. And he could just steal the whole show. And he's got the ability to do it. Uh, Shara Bullet <laughs> against uh, Petrosian. I kind of like this fight, man, because Petrosian falls short when he fights against wrestler-heavy opponents. Yeah. When it's kickboxing because he's a big lad. When it's kickboxing, you get the best of Petrosian. And I think Shara Bullock wants to kickbox as well. Don't get me wrong, he's, a, he's got a little bit more to his game. But when we've seen him, he's quite a technical striker. I think this could be a really, really good fight. Yeah, this is the sleeper. This is the sleeper on the card, in my opinion. I think this one's going to live up to all the fireworks, and I think these two men are going to go at it. Love it. Right then, go on. I'm going. This is uh... where I'm going. I hate when you do this to me because you know why? To, it's, to tell you why, everyone at home, just so you all know, I've got loads of mates in this industry, you know. I've got mates that I have to look in the eyes. Bro, listen, I've got to go and interview them oh. this week, right? <laughs> so, so, uh, so they'll be looking down my eyes going, you don't, mate, and you know what you lot get like. You're so touchy, aren't you? It's just a sports pick. That's all it is. It's just a sports pick. But no, they'll look me in the eyes and they go, you said that such a such a body's going to beat me this week. You, this is what you think. Listen, it's the way it is, and it? it's the game. So here you go. I'll put I'll put I'll put them on the line. Here we go. Are you ready? Taporia. I'm going to bottle it. Whitaker. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Larone, Ankalaev, Petrosian. To beat Shara Bullet. Okay. I'm going to go. Let me go down from the top. Uh, wow. Pete, I keep going back and forth on this fight, Adam. Honestly. I'm going to go with Taporia as well. But honestly, like, just about, like, that could go either way, that one. That's just, just because of. How much I adore Max as a fighter. Adore, that's the word I'm putting on Max on late. Adore. Um, Colmain. I'm also going to go to Maya. I'm going to go to Maya. You're going to Maya. I'm going to right, go to Maya. I'm going to go to Maya. I'm going to go, also going to go Petrosian. I'm also going to, well, I'm going to go Rakic. So we've got a couple of, yeah, I'm going to go Rakic. Why not? Why not, lads? Like, I like him. I like his style. Throws it all out there, and um, you know he's the one that's coming in here with nothing to lose. 
Nothing to, and Kalea's yeah, got it all to lose on this one, mate. He's calling out for Aya every week. You're avoiding me, you're avoiding me. And then Rakic might just come and steal the whole thing. You're 100% right, man. Listen, the only thing I do know is that it's going to be an absolute blooming cracking night of fights, so make sure you check it out. <laughs> uh, get stuck into the comments section. You've heard what we've said about that men, uh, those men five on the main card. Give us, your, give us your rundown. Put your receipts in there, right? Don't be coming to us next oh. week saying, I thought this and I thought that. No, 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 put your receipts in. Right, you've seen our receipts. Put your receipts in. Uh, top man, thank you very much for uh, tuning into our show. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Uncaged will be back next week, giving you a review of UFC 308 and obviously building towards Brendan's final at the end of November in the PFL as he aims to become a two-time featherweight champion over there. Thank you very much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.